This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. It was once referred to as a happy accident. Today, it's a logical target for cattle producers. We used to think 2 to 3% of cattle would grade prime, and, and maybe we didn't know, uh, we couldn't predict that. Uh, it was just kind of a random occurrence. I think what we've learned really in the last five or 10 years is, in fact, that uh, we're, we're today up 5 and 6% of all our cattle are grade and prime on a national average. But we're finding sets of cattle, herds of cattle, breeders that have, uh, cattlemen that have focused on that target that, that are able to achieve 30 and 40 and 50% prime. So levels that we really never thought were possible before with today's genetics certainly are. Data show most super high grading cattle excel in other production traits too. Long held myths don't play out in real life. We know, in fact, today, those are cattle that grow and perform and convert uh, as good or better than, uh, than, than than your average cattle for sure. Uh, they're also, uh, they're heavier. There's, uh, so you can have that, that high level of, of carcass merit and marbling in particular without sacrificing performance, without sacrificing maternal function, uh, all the things that we know are economically relevant to cattlemen as well. When cattlemen sell on a grid, prime carcasses routinely earn $10 to even $30 per hundredweight over choice. That can add 100 to $300 per head bonuses for hitting the mark. Increasing supplies of the highest grading beef allow it to move beyond just the traditional users' white tablecloth restaurants, which builds more and more demand at both retail and food service. You know, I think if we look at from a historical standpoint, we've we've doubled the amount of prime product that we've put out there over the last handful of years. And in fact, we've seen the spreads and the premium stay just as big as they have been. Uh, I think what we have an opportunity to do is expose at that point a new customer to our our prime product. Farmers and ranchers who want to capitalize on the growing trend need to look first at the beginning. I think when we talk about prime production, we think about marbling, right? And marbling is 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 largely driven off genetics. We know that. There, there has to be genetic selection pressure put on marbling to hit these high levels. And so uh, paying really close attention, uh, not just to breed, but also, uh, you know, what are the, the, uh, the, the differences within that breed? And looking at the Angus breed, uh, uh, you know, paying attention to that marbling EPD specifically and, and selecting those cattle that are on the upper end, of the upper percentile, they're also hitting your other economic, that are also Cavanese cattle and, and uh, with growth and performance, uh, but but putting an extra selection pressure on marbling. McCauley also says keeping cattle healthy and on an increasing plane of nutrition helps them express that genetic potential. I'm Bob Cervera. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org.